welcome to Atheist Viewpoint. I'm David Silverman. And I'm Dennis Horvitz. And Merry Christmas, Dennis. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And may the Jesus' love of Jesus be all bloody in your Jesus. And may you be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And may he uh, cleanse you. You know, and I, the I, I, blood I, I, gets in your goopy and all goopy in your you ears. You know, I buy like him that. a new pair of shoes and he goes on biting his nails anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, it's it, it, he's just a terrible person to take care of. It, it's I, just great. Today is our solstice show, our yearly solstice show. Yay! That makes it a solstice show. You got to put the little jingly thing here. Um, every year we always have a jingly thing. Um, so who owns the solstice? They're not supposed to know that, by the way. <laughs> who owns okay. the solstice? Uh, the the bumper stickers. Uh, I should say the billboard went up. Uh, by the time you see this, we've got other billboards that might be already up by the time you see this. I'm not going to talk about those yet because they're not nailed down as to where and when. But we've got other billboards going up. But right now, we're talking about um, the last billboard, which was the You Know It's a Myth, really called into question who owns the solstice in the first place. Right, right. By the, by the way, we, we've come up in the world now so that uh, we have to be very selective about the people we defend. We offend. Oh, you yes. know, I mean, they, you have to kind of line up and book an appointment in advance. Yeah, guess, don't right? worry if uh, you we'll haven't been offended you. yet. We'll get to we'll you, get to you in you. good yeah. time. Uh, <laughs> so who owns the solstice? One of the things that I hate about the, the season is that the Christians believe they own it. The Christians believe that this is their season. And what people don't understand is that Christianity is not the first or the fifth or even the tenth mythology to name oh, the right. winter solstice as the birth time of their savior god. Okay? And what they basically did was they stole a holiday called Yule, which was a pagan holiday, which was based around the winter solstice. They, they appropriated it. They stole it. They stole it. They took it. They renamed it a little bit. Okay? <laughs> they, they renamed it. Um, for the for they renamed it Christ Mass uh, for the Christ, which by the way is also a stolen word because it's Hindu. They 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 take this holiday, they steal it, they call it Christmas, and then that's fine because religions steal from each other all the time. Okay, religions steal from each other all the time over in history, over and over and over again. But now they're saying, or that they've been saying, is that this is their holiday, and that to say anything other than Merry Christmas. Is 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 somehow an assault on them. Now, a good example, Senator Inhofe of Pennsylvania. There was a uh, a parade that used to be called the Christmas Parade, and now it's called the Holiday Parade. Right. That's it. Right. Now it doesn't mean that Christmas has been excluded. No. Because certainly it has not. No. Because you can't. But okay? somewhere somewhere there's an adult making the decision who wanted to be all inclusive. So. The senator, who supposedly has, I don't know if this is the truth, but supposedly Senator Inhofe has non-Christian constituents. As supposedly. Right. Supposedly he actually works for everybody, even the ones who are not Christian. Right. So he refused to attend the parade. Because it was a holiday parade. Because it's a holiday parade and not a Christmas parade. Okay. This is bigotry. It's also factually incorrect. And infantile. And infantile. Yeah. I mean, it, if it's not all my party, I'm not coming. Can you imagine right. how the rest of this world would, would function if we did that? Right. If, if we, um, if, if, if anybody acted in such a way that if, if it was not mine specifically, it's like if, if, if somebody has a birthday party, if, some, if a whole bunch of people are born on the same day and they have a group birthday party, but one kid won't come because it's not only about him. That's exactly what happened here. Christianity is one of many religions that have a holiday during this time. And by the way, it's all based off of the winter solstice, which is a celestial event. Well, you know, the thing is that the, the Catholic Church has actually been pretty, uh, was pretty straightforward and upfront about the fact that they uh, placed the celebration for the birth of, of Jesus uh, on December 25th because it was close to the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and, and that was because the, uh, the pagans that they wanted to convert were already celebrating that holiday anyway. Of course. Oh. The, the number one religion in the Roman army during the first century, the common era, was Mithraism. Right. Uh, and, and Mithras was born on December 25th. <laughs> right. But, uh, and actually, I think uh, cr uh, Christian scholars uh, generally agree that uh, Jesus was supposedly born in the spring, actually. Of course. That's when the shepherds uh, were tilling the sheep right. on, on the hills. Uh, they wouldn't, till the, they wouldn't uh, tend to the sheep on the hills in the winter because it would be too cold. Right. And so that's the, that the, there's no mention, first of all, the, even the, the, the ancient traditions uh, don't celebrate the birth of anything. There's nothing in the Bible about celebrating the birthday of Jesus. Nothing. There's nothing in the Bible about when he was actually born except for this whole shepherd tilling the sheep. Do you know that uh, I read somewhere, um, I forgot his first name, but Rabbi Wine, he used to be the leader of uh, uh, the secular Jews. Secular Jews. In one book that he wrote, he said that um, the story of Hanukkah uh, base, is based on, uh, um, of course, the Jewish rebels in, in, uh, in, in the Middle East at that time. Uh, and that the, according to him, that the actual uh, battle to throw off the Christ, the Syrians, from which you know the Hanukkah thing was done, but the battle was actually deliberately p planned for that time of year because so that it would have the significance of the solstice, and then the, the you know the, the Hanukkah thing with the you know um, lighting the menorah and then having only enough oil for one day and it stretched out to eight days. Mm. Well, that that was added to it later on. But the point I'm making is that it's not just that, it, like you say, it isn't just Christianity that has made use of the winter solstice, that, uh, that according to this one source, that the, the uh, Hasmoneans, I guess they called, deliberately planned this attack to drive off the Syrians at the winter solstice. So. Hmm. And, so it, and then the, the, the Christians, and of course, when I say the Christians, I'm not talking about all Christian people, okay? Please don't think that I'm talking about all Christian people. But I am talking about those Christian people who insist. There's actually uh, a website out there where you can check in if your retailer is naughty or nice. And if it's naughty, that means that they say happy, happy holidays. holidays. That's naughty. Right. That's the that's the that's the company to boycott. If According they say them, happy right. holidays, right. they boycott. Right. And if they if they say Merry Christmas and if they have a manger, right. well, then that's a good company. That's a nice company. Right. We should come. I mean, the whole concept of this, this I guess you'd call it a, a consumeristic terrorism, uh, that if you don't do it my way, I guess terrorism is not the right word. No. But if, if what would you call it? Consumeristic bigotry. Well, you mean, you mean, you mean, um, if you don't sponsor my holiday exclusively over everybody else's, I'm not going to shop there. And I'm going to tell everybody else not to shop here. I'm going to be bad-mouthing you on the Internet. Inter infantilism. Infantilism. Childishness. Puerile. Okay, right. let's use Whatever. that. Yeah. Let's use that. I mean, it, it's, it's really base. It's really puerile. It, it's, it's really immature. Yeah. And the word is bigoted. The word is self-centered. The word is it's all about me and nothing about anyone else. So much so that even if you acknowledge anyone else, I'm not going to shop there. I'm not going to be your friend. I'm going to say bad things about you on the internet. I'm going to bitch and complain and cause you stress. Not because you're doing anything wrong, but because you're not giving Christianity a monopoly. Senator Inhofe, same thing. You're not giving well, Christianity the monopoly. That's well, what they right, crave. Right. It's, it's they, not about sharing. It's not about right. assault. It's about Christianity having a monopoly on right. the season. Well, they, they, they're not so concerned that, we're, that the, there are non-Christians, as long as the non-Christians show deference. Yes. Uh, that we acknowledge that we're guests and that we are second-class citizens to them. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's we're, part. We're guests. That's yes, right. We're guests. We're guests. Yeah. This is a Judeo-Christian nation. And that we exist at their pleasure and, you know. And uh, this is their holiday. Right. It's 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 really quite sad right. that they've actually gotten into this mode uh, where it's it's not just us against them. It's it's anybody who 
It's 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 kind of George W. Bushian. If you're not with us, you're against us. Right. You know, if you're not gung ho for Christmas only, you must hate Christmas. You must right. be naughty. You must right. hate all this stuff. I mean, it, it's and, and you know what I have seen. I have seen a lot of ads. So far, I mean, we're, we're taping this in the middle of Dece December, so we're right in the middle of the season. I've seen a lot more ads about the holiday season this year than I have about the Christmas season. Yeah, I guess. Have you noticed that? Uh, it might be that um, uh, they've shot their wad and it's you know it's 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 kind of over. You know. It's I hope old. so. Um, I hope so because th there's a lot of people out in this country, and uh, that are not Christian. And they just want to celebrate the holidays. Or uh, maybe there are, uh, and also there could be enough Christians who are secure in their faith that they don't need to, they don't feel threatened if somebody says happy holiday. So maybe the rallying cry of let's defend Christmas isn't resonating anymore? Well, you know, it's that old ploy of, uh, of um, you know, when they, when, certainly in, in some cases in the extreme uh, or, they kind of make them. It's that whole victimization ploy. Well, you know, look at me, my a, poor thing. You know, we're we're with their victims. So uh, this year, um, we're going to just show a, a, a nice clip from Tom Flynn, uh, who is the executive director of the Council for Secular Humanism, and he uh, came to American Atheist headquarters, and he gave his speech on the trouble with Christmas, which I think is a fantastic uh, speech. We want to thank Tom for coming. Um, the slides that you're going to see in back of him are going to be blurred out because they're not copyrighted, but we're just going to show you a few clips of Tom Flynn's speech from the War on Christmas. Uh, started off with a, a nice musical interlude from FM. Uh, maybe I'll put a, a, a nice clip of them in there as well. Um, I want to thank you for watching, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll clip that part out. And uh, we've got two minutes left, but I think I'm going to kill it off here. Um, do you have anything left to say before we close it off? No, um, just hope you had a happy holiday. Okay, so let's uh, um, hold on for this and we'll watch the clip. don't go to holiday parties and by the way I did not pose for that picture and I insist that's my story and that's the end of it to my mind if Jesus Christ is not your savior Christmas is not your holiday and can someone better versed in theology than myself please explain that bluebird I also and this may be more more controversial here today I don't observe the winter solstice or any of those fuzzy halfway holidays that resemble it. For me, Christmas is precisely just another day. When it falls on a work day, as it does not this year, Christmas is Saturday this year. But years that it does fall on a work day, you'll find me putting in a full day at the Center for Inquiry. And you know, it's great. There's no traffic. The phone hardly rings, with a couple of exceptions, and I get a lot done though it is tough finding somewhere to go for lunch. Mm. There is always that. 
but uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I do have one issue with the phones on Christmas Day. I have about a dozen uh, radio disc jockeys and talk show hosts who call me at work every Christmas. Two of them have been doing it every year since 1993, just to see if I'm there. <laughs> I even had one of them, oh, this must have been 95, 96, called me up. Uh, you know, it was the first year that after my book came out that Christmas fell on a weekend. He says, hey, I called, and where were you? And I said, hey, you dimmy, it was a weekend. I don't work on weekends. Oh, yeah, just another day, right? But Sunday, I don't go in. I sleep in late. I'm an atheist. <laughs> but I'm still getting ahead of myself. Between 1979 and 1984, I was that ultimate contradiction in terms, an atheist who celebrates Christmas. I didn't believe in God, but I still observed his kid's birthday. I had abandoned belief in the babe, but I couldn't bring myself to pour out the bath water. Perhaps because I didn't have a helpful flashcard like that. Eventually, integrity triumphed, and I abandoned the holiday. Today, I think it makes about as much sense for atheists and humanists to celebrate Christmas as it does for socialists to cheat on their taxes. And later in this talk, I'll focus on reasons why I think atheists and humanists should consider pulling the plug on the holiday. At holiday time, I urge unbelievers to be proud about what makes them different, to just say no to this Christian festival, as it were, to draw a line in the snow. But first, some history. You see, I wasn't the first to follow this Scrooge-like path. In 1633, an English lawyer named William Prynne wrote a book fiercely critical of Christmas. As far as I know, it is the only book in the English language prior to my own to have made an uncompromising effort to undermine the holiday. Now, I should mention that Prynne was a Puritan. He was a partisan of Oliver Cromwell. And that in 1633, King Charles I was still on the throne and his head was still on his shoulders. The English Civil War between the Puritans and the Cavaliers was nine years away. So Prynne's attack on Christmas was actually an attack on the monarchy. Well, what did William Prynne get for writing his book against Christmas? Charles I had Prynne thrown in the Tower of London, tried before the Star Chamber, pilloried in the stocks, fined 5,000 pounds back when that was real money, ejected from Oxford and disbarred, and oh yes, they burned his book. Now, dating from this period is a fragment of traditional verse that pretty clearly expresses how non-Puritans, that is, pretty much everybody else in England, felt about the Puritan Christmas critics. Whoever against Holly do cry in a rope shall be hung full high. Alleluia! I've always thought the Alleluia was a special touch. And yet, in spite of this, I wrote my book anyway. Now, why did I do that? Well, opposing the holiday wasn't always unpopular. In 1653, the aforementioned Cromwell became the Lord Protector of England. Cromwell and his Puritans tried hard to eradicate Christmas across the island. Uh, it's a little hard to read the public notice, but what it says there is, the observation of Christmas having been deemed a sacrilege. The exchanging of gifts and greetings, dressing in fine clothing, feasting, well, it actually says feasting, but we know what they mean, and similar satanical practices are hereby forbidden. Sadly, it didn't last. By 1661, the monarchy was restored and Christmas roared back. Yet, while it had languished under the Puritan boot, the holiday had sustained injuries that would eventually prove fatal. After the euphoria of the Restoration subsided, the English Christmas celebration began to falter. In fact, the ancient feast observed since medieval days literally died out between 1790 and 1820. At least in public institutions, the entire English-speaking world became Yule-free. Researchers reviewing December 25th issues of the Times of London from the early 1800s 
could find no mention that any holiday was even being observed. Well, what does this tell us? What does it tell us that the churches weren't having extra services, the merchants weren't doing anything special, businesses were not closing? Well, it tells us that the holiday Christians celebrate doesn't go back 2,000 years or even 500 years. It's a revival, perhaps more accurately, a reanimation that only took form in England and the U.S. during the Victorian era. And I mean England and the U.S. Christmas, the way we know it, is not a universal holiday. It's not even a broadly European holiday. The Christmas we know is narrowly Anglo-American. Foreign traditions like the German Tannenbaum could enter the Yuletide canon only as they were refracted through the preoccupations of a startlingly small number of English-speaking Victorians. How small a number? Well, without the personal, if sometimes accidental, contributions of just six eminent Victorians, contemporary Christmas would not have the form it has today. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you your rogues gallery. Just who were these people? Well, in my book, I called them the Dwamics. That's an acronym, D-W-A-M-Q-S, and I called them that because they were, well, five dead white Anglo males and a queen. <laughs> the first culprit was Washington Irving. Now, Washington Irving wrote a fanciful history of the Dutch colonizers of New York City. Uh, of course, the Dutch had New York City first. They called it New Amsterdam. Uh, Irving was writing very much from the perspective of the English speakers who had taken the colony from the Dutch, and he wanted to show what silly buffoons they were. He made all sorts of outrageous claims about what the New Amsterdam Dutch used to do at Christmas time, including their children's supposed fascination with a legendary character named Sinterklaas. Now, did the New Amsterdam Dutch keep Christmas? Of course they did. Did their colony shut down for six weeks every winter while they did nothing but keep Christmas? Of course it didn't, but that's what Irving wrote. This was satire, but later generations took it all seriously and sought to restore these traditions. It would be as though centuries from now, future archaeologists unearthed a great trove of Daily Show episodes <laughs> and used them to reconstruct a history of American foreign policy. In other words, today's figure of Santa Claus did not develop out of a real tradition. It grew out of a misunderstood satire of a tradition, an ironic heritage, to say the least. And we're back. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us, Dennis. I really appreciate it. Always glad to um, uh, thank you. The, our email address is avtv at atheist.org. I'm David Silverman. Dennis Horvitz. Thank you for joining us on Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules. We hope. Most, most of the time. Sometimes. All the time.